Hey bees, I'm Marie from Humble Bee and Me, and today we are celebrating World Nutella Day with this beautiful chocolate hazelnut body lotion. So Nutella, in case you haven't been acquainted, and you should become acquainted if you haven't become acquainted, is an absolutely decadent chocolate hazelnut paste that is very successfully marketed as a breakfast food, which I am all for because it means that I can have chocolate for breakfast. It's fantastic, you know, on waffles, uh, French toast, you stuff it in a croissant, you eat it off a spoon. This stuff is... It'll make you really good friends with stretchy pants. It's fantastic. <laughs> so I thought maybe, uh, maybe I would develop a calorie-free way to enjoy the decadence that is Nutella. And from that was born this lotion. <laughs> Since Nutella is chocolate and hazelnut, it shouldn't surprise you to find out that there is cocoa butter and hazelnut oil in this lovely lotion. I've also added some Moringa oil, because as lovely as hazelnut oil is, it's astringent and dries crazy, crazy, crazy fast on the skin, so it's a drying oil. The hazelnut oil doesn't really smell like anything, whereas Moringa oil has a lovely nutty smell. So we get the hazelnut, we get the nutty smell, and then we get the chocolatey smell from the cocoa butter. Towards the end, we're also going to add a little bit of vanilla e benzoin and some cocoa absolute to really amp up the scent. But you don't have to if you don't want to. The, the scent from just the raw ingredients is fantastic. So we'll just emulsify those oils with some emulsifying wax, some water, and a bit of glycerin, and, and we've got ourselves a beautiful lotion that smells good enough to eat, but I would recommend sticking with the, uh, the original Nutella if you want something to put on your bagel in the morning. So come on, let's get started. We'll kick things off by measuring our oil part into a 250 milliliter beaker. So in here I have seven grams of cocoa butter and make sure you use cocoa butter that smells absolutely amazing. In here I have six grams of hazelnut oil. And you'll notice this part of the recipe, the oil, the liquid oil part is a little different than it is in the written recipe. And it's because I wanted to include some Moringa oil because Moringa oil smells wonderfully nutty. Well, hazelnut oil doesn't really smell like much of anything. So I wanted that chocolate nut scent combo, so I swapped out some of the hazelnut oil for a bit of nutty moringa oil. You could also use something like macadamia nut oil or any other sort of a nutty smelling oil you have. And then this here is six grams of emulsifying wax NF, and you can use any other complete emulsifying wax. So you could use BTMS 50, Reed Emulse, or Polo Wax instead but no beeswax, and if you are wondering why, I made a video of what will happen if you do, and I will link to that in the description box below. And then we will get our water part ready, and the water part for this one is nice and simple. In here we have 80 grams of distilled water, and in here we have two grams of vegetable glycerin. So now it's time to just heat everything through. So in here, this is just a, a wide flat bottom saute pan that's got about an inch of water in it, and I'm going to pop each of these in here and go put this on the stovetop over medium heat for about half an hour to melt everything through and help the glycerin dissolve. And I will see you when that's done. So about 20 minutes later, everything has heated through so we can remove everything from our water bath here. And set our water bath aside, we are done with that. So we are going to add our water part to our oil part here. You can see that immediately starts to look a little creamy and milky as it starts to emulsify. So we'll get that quick little stir here. I can definitely smell the cocoa butter and it smells awesome. And we're gonna grab a little mixer here. So this here uh, is a little milk frother that is as you can see, I'm not using, it has multiple attachments, and so this is not the frother attachment. So it's not designed to beat air into something, so that's good. And then it goes up to 15,000 RPM. So this is a really strong, fast one. If you have a slower milk frother or one that's really designed to like add air to a mixture, I would recommend using an immersion blender instead. So let's give this a good blending. All right, we're gonna leave that to cool for about 10 minutes and come back and blend it some more. It's been about 10 minutes. Get this little stir here and do some more blending. I can see some bits starting to solidify that have sort of floated up to the top here, but it is still very, very clearly liquid and we need to continue blending this and leave it to cool for a bit longer. Well, 
that's starting to thicken up a little bit. Sort of has the consistency of unwhipped heavy cream. Uh, we'll leave that to cool for another 10 minutes and come back and check on it. It's been about 20 minutes because I went and had some lunch and this has definitely started to thicken up and when I put my hands around the beaker here it's only just warm it's not hot anymore like it was before so we are making good progress here this lotion should be reasonably thick when it sets up because it has some cocoa butter in it which obviously contributes to the thickening because it is a hard brittle fat all right let's give that another blending here Now that this is reasonably viscous and cool, we are ready to add our cool down ingredients. So that is going to be our essential oils and our preservative. So for essential oils, honestly, for this recipe, they're totally optional because this smells awesome on its own. I'm choosing to further accentuate the awesomeness with a bit of vanilla-like benzoin and some cocoa absolute. So it'll be extra chocolatey with a hint of vanilla. So I'm gonna add about one blob of benzoin. And if you've worked with benzoin before, you'll know why I'm saying blob and not drop. It's really thick and viscous here. And I'll shoot for about five drops of Cocoa Absolute, but this one doesn't have a dropper. So if it's a little bit more, I'm not too fussed. All right, that was six. That's pretty good. Oh, that smells even more amazing than it did before. I want to eat it. And now for our preservative. In order to determine how much preservative we need, first we need to determine how much of this there is. So I have two identical beakers, so I'll be able to use this little trick, but if you don't have two identical beakers, make sure you weigh the container that you're making your lotion in and write that number down beforehand. So I can pop empty beaker on here, tear the scale, remove that, that on there, and that is our final lotion weight. So that's 96.5 grams. And then we multiply that by 0 0.005 for half a percent. And that is 0.48 grams of preservative. Uh, and that's for liquid Germol Plus. Um, usage rates do vary with preservatives. So make sure you're using the correct usage rate for your preservative. This is my more precise scale it measures down to 0 0.01 of a gram instead of just 0 0.1. So we're gonna go for 0.8 grams here. And that's already too much. That is so easy to do. So we're just grabbing a little spoon here, pull some out. All right, there we go. That is close enough. Uh, the recommended usage rate for Liquid Germol Plus is 0.1 to 0.5%. So a little bit less is not a bad thing. So we're gonna come in here, scrape that into our beaker. We are now ready to move this into our container. So this is a little half cup, 120 milliliter jar. So this lotion will continue to thicken up over the next day or so. So uh, if you're concerned that it seems a little bit thin and you know not very Nutella-like, it will will get thicker. Have no worries. And so if your lotion is still a bit warm, don't transfer it to your container yet because it can and will condense on the inside of your container, especially if you're using sort of a, a bottle that has a narrower neck. And then that condensation will be preserved, and that can you know, introduce a bit of a bit of risk there. So just wait until wait until this uh, original container has come to room temperature, which this one has, before transferring it to your container. And there we are. So you just made some Nutella body lotion. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and check the description box below for the full written recipe with amounts in metric and imperial and links to everything I used in this recipe. And uh, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Apparently those are cool things to have on YouTube. See you next time.